Hello, everyone. Welcome to the IPFS All Hands Call. This is the first of many calls today. Um, unfortunately, as you may have noticed, we cannot stream this, and so I'm so sorry to the people who would like to see the stream. If you're seeing this in the future, that's because we've uploaded to YouTube, which is the plan. So welcome from the future. If you have any questions, we're always on IRC and Sprint issues if you want to raise them. Um, please do. Our goals for today is a bit different than on normal calls. We're going to be going over Q4 in the future and how things go. And I'll let Matt talk about that in a minute. Um, after this call, which should take around an hour, we should end at around 1 o'clock Eastern time, which I believe is 1700 UTC. We will have four calls today. Go IPFS, LibP2P, no, Go IPFS, Orbit, JS IPFS, and LibP2P. Those are going to be the four calls in that order, as you can see on the sprint issue, which is in github.com slash IPFS slash PM slash issues slash 217. I think that ends the airplane-like recording of my announcements today. So please take your seats, buckle up, and I'm going to hand it over to Matt. I'm going to be the note taker, so that's already taken care of. So Matt, what are we doing today? Well, hello. Uh, so today we're going to be focused on roadmap for Q4. Uh, since we are not able to stream, that means that anyone on IRC is not able to watch. So if everyone can help by watching IRC, and if anyone appears there, encourage them to join the Zoom call, help them get on the Zoom call so that people can at least follow along and ask questions. Uh, and just ask them to mute and turn off their, their video. Um, that would be great, because we do want people to be able to participate. Uh, and so let's start with a roll call, and then we'll talk about today's structure. So let's do, since there are a lot of people converged at Protocol Labs in Toronto, let's go geographic. But if you're in Toronto right now, do geographic based on where you usually are. <laughs> So starting with with Cuba, or yeah, we should do roll call. There's because it's it's a roadmap call. So start with Cuba. Hello everyone. I'm Cuba uh, Kubuksu on IRC and GitHub. Uh, I'm working on Go IPFS and all connected libraries, and I think that's it. I guess Merlin second. So, hi, I'm Hotcode. I work on Orbit and I guess on Chase IPFS. I'm Lars. I work on Go IPFS and the infrastructure. And, no. Hector. Hi, I'm Hector and I work on Go IPFS as well. David. Hi, I'm David. I work on JSIP Fest and we beer. And I'm about to go to customs right now. So I have to just call for a little bit. See you guys in a bit. So we, we have now have recorded evidence that David has violated international law by having a phone on and before going through customs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Victor. Uh, I'm Victor. Uh, I live in Barcelona. I work on JavaScript things associated to IPFS and apps and everything around it. Uh, then I guess, uh, oh, Friedel, who just showed up here. Roll call. Who are you, Friedel? Can you hear me? Yep, cool. Uh, I'm Friedel. Uh, I do JavaScript things mostly currently, uh, mostly JSIPFS and uh, LibPTP modules related to that. All right, now US East Coast. I'm Matt Zumwalt. I'm a uh, program manager for Protocol Lab, so I, I do lots of stuff around governance, decision making, and overall organizational roadmap. I'm Richard, somehow further to the west of. Philly, even though I'm in Boston, but it's okay, Matt. I won't blame you too much. You're in Montreal. I'm in Montreal. That's true. Okay, I do documentation and community stuff, and yeah. I am Emily, representing the southeastern portion of the U.S. I am project manager for Protocol Labs, and I manage projects. Uh, 
uh, one I work on as a whole, uh, a lot of different sub projects, and I do a lot of figuring out the problem. Your audio is very bad, Juan. Um, I don't know why. Make sure you're on the right network, perhaps. I think Jeremy is next. Yeah, I'm Jeremy, and I don't understand why Juan's internet is significantly worse than the rest of ours. Um, I work on Go IPFS and do the, the things with the code. Cool. I think that's, oh, Kevin Atkinson. I don't know if you want to. He said he's just lurking on this one in the chat. Okay. So. All right. Just following along. All right. All right. So today's call, we're focusing on roadmap for Q4 and identify it. So the priority is not necessarily to set the roadmap. The priority is to identify what are the, what are the things that we should be discussing, that we should be considering for priorities for Q4. Um, and in general, we will be going in-depth project by project with this stuff uh, during the normal project-specific sprint calls. So one thing to emphasize is that uh, if we want to identify anything that would be great to work on that's overarching efforts, things that cut across multiple projects, now is a good time to discuss those. Uh, other than that, then we'll, at the tail end of this call, we'll just, Juan will be going through a quick run through of a reminder of what are all of the projects in the IPFS sphere. Um, other than those two things, are there any agenda items that people would like to add to the agenda for today? Okay. All right, so then the, the, this all hands call might be kind of short and we'll get a little bit of a break before we go into the, the Go IPFS call. Uh, but uh, so then beginning with is there anything that people would like to flag that would be great to work on in Q4 that does not basically is not go IPFS, JS IPFS, libp2p, or orbit? Uh, for example, do people have things to discuss around multi formats? Do people do people have what were some of the other things that people had flagged? Um, now would be a good time to talk about cluster clustering or private networks these sort of cross-cutting topics. Does anyone want to, I want to just provide this opportunity for people to call those things out. All right, well. Project repos, I mean, should we just throw stuff out? Yeah, yeah. well, let's, let's just do a quick, yeah. How about people call things out and I will type them down in this list. And then, uh, and then we'll run through them. So project three. Multi-formats, libp2p and IPLD organizational setup. Tutorials. I want better IPFS tutorials. I want a overhauling of the IPFS examples on the website. Define overhauling. Going through quality assurance and rewriting if necessary, particularly in a structured textbook-like manner, which I believe Matt has been working on. Generally, documentation. Um, tutorials, examples, but API, talk, documentation. Um, yeah, basically everything. Community process around documentation. Say that again. Sorry, I was. And also, uh, <clears throat> community process around documentation, like how best to facilitate outside contribution of documentation. Write the docs. Yeah. I think blog, Lars. Oh, yeah. Like making it no, your, your, your idea to IPFS pages, making that a product, making it work really well. So you can automatically host a static website on IPFS. Yeah, no, no, why not? All right, that seems like a good list. Is there any, is there anything missing from that list that people want to add?
Okay, I don't see any hands up. So we'll just go. Oh, did someone just say something? Um, yeah, just put IPFS cluster and general API alignment me between Go and, and JavaScript. Can we just launch Filecoin? Just this quarter. Hi. Uh, so, um, so then we'll run with this list, and we'll just go in the order that people called them out. Uh, so that would mean the first thing was project repos. Is there anything you wanted to discuss, Richard, about project repos? No, I just think it'd be great to work on it. It'd be great to you know have that be a goal for this quarter. Uh, I especially like project repos. Uh, so project repos, it seems like a really great place for us to start building up metrics for our projects as a whole. So it already is a really great dashboard. It's better than a lot of open source dashboards that I've seen out there. Um, and we could add in more things for ways to give metrics of how healthy are these projects, how much uptake do they have, how much contribution do we have, what's our turnover in terms of people contributing and pull requests getting closed. So there's a lot of potential use there. Yeah, it's been great this quarter. Um, so I've been going through and making sure a lot of them are green. So like Liquid to be multi-formats have been really doing a lot of effort trying to ensure that like everything works there. What I would really like would be to actually have stats for that as well and to be able to log differences over time. So I can sort of see how much green I've taken, made things, you know, by adding contribute docs everywhere, licenses everywhere. Like how, what, what our progress is, because I feel like a lot of that stuff isn't being logged very well. Um, and that's sort of, so building that entire dashboard up a bit further from what it currently is, which is kind of just an overall matrix into like a nice, more than a table, you know, moving on to a, a full dashboard. I think that would be super, super cool. Um, Frito? Yeah, I, I want to say something similar in terms of more than a table. Um, given that there are so many projects on there, it becomes hard to go through them. Um, so I think if we could just a little bit on the UI, um, with the same features actually that are currently there, if we can also very quickly, really, you might want to talk a bit louder. It's kind of hard to hear when, when you're talking or move closer to the microphone. So the, I guess the, the question is like, what, could we get a read of people's sentiment about how, like if we were to make that a priority for Q4, not for everyone, but how, how strong is people's interest in seeing project repos evolve over the next three months? Maybe that's a badly posed question. Um, well, let's just go through this list. We'll go through the, the whole list and then, and then come back around and people, uh, we have time for people to think about priorities and who's gonna work on what. One? The one thing I, I would say about uh, project repos uh, is that I think metrics are super important. Uh, and it's, they're starting to become like a really valuable thing to, to use in terms of figuring out what issues are out there, where we need to spend time on PRs and improvements and so on. So I think doing, setting aside some time to focus on that during this quarter would be pretty valuable, I think. Um, cool. Um, all right, multi-formats. Do people have things to say about multi-formats, uh, for, especially for Q4, things we need out of that or should prioritize? Lars? Like, um, same thing as with all the other projects, documentation, and mainly like technical documentation and guides and all that kind of stuff, but also writing up what, like the why of multi-formats. Why we came up with a which problems does it solve? Um, uh. Yeah, that's uh, my. I mean, my. I haven't looked at the multi format site in a little bit, but it's it like hints at some of that why, but doesn't really go in depth. So, are you suggesting that we just write that up more fully? 
and potentially um, specs. Uh, cool. Anything else to flag about multi formats in Q4? The website hasn't been finished yet. Would be great to get that up as well as the documentation. Right now, it's basically just a clone of the README, which works in some ways. And like we're waiting for content like for the spec and stuff. But it'd be sweet if we could have. So I mean, I laid down the, the bare bones of like what's possible, but have a really good planning session about who is this for, how can we solve this, you know, what's the website for, who are its users, how can we really talk about how great this is in a really clear fashion. Um, and sort of move forward to make it really polished and just beautiful. It's, it would be great. Emily, could you flag multi-formats as something that is going to need a discussion at some point, even if it doesn't happen this week? Uh, and then related with that, I, is in my notes, I said org setup, but this was Richard, you had said something about setting up org around multi-formats and IPLD and all these other things. What did you mean by that? So with all of, IPFS is sort of branched, and all of a sudden we now have different organizations. We have multi-formats, IPLD, and to a certain extent Orbit, and we have Lippy2P, right? So each of these different organizations is set up in a certain way. There's like a, a novel repo, a website repo, a community repo, and all the readme's like currently trying to use standard readme. I've been trying to make that consistent across so it doesn't you know, end up with like random readme's uh, or random repos that no one knows what they're doing. But it'd be good to have a better sort of process written down of all the work I'm doing there and how other people could do that. So it's not just A, dependent on me, and B, that's sort of thing get lost, and C, we all decide how things should look. And now we should talk about our GitHub organizations. Um, for instance, should I open up a new repo in which organization, and should I move all my private repos into this organization? What do we do with external collaborators who want to move repositories into one organization? How do we do all this sort of stuff? Right now it's been kind of nebulous, which is fine because you know we're growing, we're trying to figure things out, but we're going to be making more. So Orbit's probably going to become an organization at some point, right? And what's that going to look like? How how do we maintain community awareness of the fact that as an organization we work by having tons of repos in different organizations, right? So I would like to have a discussion about that, and I would like to especially sort of nail down a document that says this is how we do things at Protocol Labs. This is how we do things at IPFS organization. Um, and we would love to get community involvement on that. Um, does that sort of answer your question? Yeah, and I wonder, would it be overreaching to try to combine that conversation with the conversation about project repos? That project repo seems like a good way to track whether we are actually setting up our organizations in ways that match with our, sort of, we have to design, decide how we want to be doing this, and then project repos becomes the way that we check whether we're actually following through. Um, so it could be one, in my head, it seems like one continuous conversation. Is that unreasonable, or does that sound like a one? I think uh, the project repos tool probably will serve some specific purpose. I think the, like, just be, you know, having a table that you can sort and so on that like, probably isn't grouped. Um, some people will want that to exist still, uh, but it could be the same application that has a couple different views or something, um, where one is really broken down by here are all the different organizations and here are all the different repositories within those organizations. Um, and then you can have you know the, the view that people want. I think there will be some resistance to changing it from, from some people that like are, are using it as, as it is now. Cool. All right. Uh, anything else about org setup? I think uh, one thing that would be really useful to do is actually figure out how approachable it is. Um, the people that have been working on it and so on understand it, um, but uh, we haven't yet really figured out if a newcomer can find their way around it without you know, direct assistance. Um, and I think it's a very important thing to do. I think it's also true on the sub-organization level, like the JS repos, how do you figure out where the tests are and stuff. We've had a lot of friction there. Um, and that would be super sweet to overhaul. Uh, Go is also having the same thing. It's kind of part of the tutorial overhaul there. Um, and those will also break down into the different calls later. But on an organizational level, totally applies. I'm gonna rearrange the list because that segues straight into the, the question of, documentation, especially developer documentation. Um, 
I recently reread the Producing Open Source Software book, uh, and it spends a lot of time talking about the things that you can do in terms of structuring your project to encourage contribution and to like make it clear how people can contribute. And we do a huge amount of work on, I mean, we make, uh, as a whole, all of these IPFS repos are exemplary in making the effort to do a lot of that stuff, but I think we can do even better. And there are good guidelines, for example, in that book. Um, so that's, does anyone have particular observations around that of stuff we could work on over the next quarter? Documentation in general? So when you say documentation, do you mean API documentation or do you mean a better readme or? So what I, so there's kind of two different target audiences for um, the documentation in general. And uh, I'm looking at this from the JSI PFS perspective. But we have documentation for people who want to contribute. That's one type of documentation. But there's, I, and personally, I think this is the more important part, which is the consumers of that, that particular module. So people who don't necessarily want to contribute, but they want to start using the IPFS modules. And we're currently completely lacking that documentation. Or like, we're not completely lacking it. It's just really, really hard to find the right documentation. And so that's basically what I'm looking at in, in terms of um, JS related things. And, and this mainly concerns the, the main module. So JS IPFS API and JS IPFS in itself. Like, how do I use this module? This is a question that people can get answered at the moment. And this is a feedback that gets flagged in, in, the, in the issues quite often as well as IRC. So that's, I, I personally think that should be the highest priority at the moment to get the, the user documentation um, up to a level where people can actually jump in and start using it. Developer documentation goes deeper into all of that and includes all the sub modules that, you know, like JSIPFS uses. But currently uh, we just need to be able to um, get people to use the modules fast. Freedom. So is this limited to JS IPFS? Um, I definitely agree this is a problem in JS IPFS, uh, but I'm wondering if this is not a broader problem. So for example, is this problem, does this problem exist also in the multi-formats modules? Does this problem exist for Go IPFS? If so, how strongly does it exist there? How important is it there? Um, I do think it's important to separate the, the kind of documentation that we're talking about in the three different categories, basically. First, you would have like a, a tutorial, like a quick start, kind of like how Go IPFS is doing it at the moment with the examples. Super good to get started and like get a feel for how the tool is working. But then also have like guides, like how do you actually build things by using this tool? And like, where does it help you? And then, of course, in the end, you would have like the reference guide um, for people who already know what they're trying to do, so they can just jump in, get the right information, and, and continue working. Um, so, and I feel that that is missing in basically every single project. Uh, there are good contributing guidelines, uh, like what Savoli calls the developer uh, guide, but for the for the people that is actually gonna use these kind of things, there is not much except the, the tests we have in the source code currently. Question, Victor. So when you say the reference guide, do you mean basically like API docs or something more than that? Yeah, API docs, just a long list of every single thing that you can basically do. Okay. Uh, that's a great list. Thanks for that, Victor. Looking at that list, I, I'm sort of adding a, I would add a base layer around the tutorials of, because we're dealing with a lot of topics that are very new, they're sort of like there in the 
computer science background, but they're not necessarily deeply, most engineers are not necessarily deeply familiar with all these topics. Um, there's sort of a baseline of reference material that we, I would like to create that establishes basic language around things like Merkle DAGs, things like the way we approach networking, the way we like what we mean by pub sub, because then that then you don't have to re-explain those things in all the other documentation. We, like if we come up with a baseline of like good explanations for these things or good link, links to good explanations of those things, then we we can be a little bit more focused in all that other uh, documentation. Otherwise, I think you basically will end up re-teaching, like rewriting the stuff to teach those things for the Go IPFS documentation and for the libp2p documentation, and it sort of recurs over and over and over. Do people agree with that? That that would be a smart way to approach documentation to actually like do that baseline first. Victor, I do think that, uh, for example, the API reference would be. Uh, would be unique per project, uh, probably, except for example, the HTTP API, but the tutorials and the guides could just be in one place. It doesn't have to be project specific, you know, because, yeah. Freedom. Yeah, one, one thing to note on this is there are a lot of product like services out there that, for example, have APIs in different languages. And there is like this theme where you have the general explanation of this is what this method does, this is how it works. And then you have um, like a small part that is language specific and you have like a selector which you choose. Like I'm interested in JS, I'm interested in Go, I'm interested in PHP, right? And then you get examples and the exact call definitions for that uh, language in line with the rest of the general documentation which is language agnostic. And I can see that happening for IPFS as well as Matt mentioned, there's a lot of things that need to be explained, which are independent of the language. It also gives a good um, way to make sure people know what is there in some languages. For example, that one fee, you can pull one feature, you click on go and it says, this is how you didn't go, but then you click on JS and it will say like, we're sorry, this is currently not available in JavaScript. Um, that sounds great. Uh, I, and this whole, uh, so I think that would be a really cool way to, to approach doing this baseline of work. And then, so then there's the question of which approach do we use that's probably existing tools for building that documentation. Richard? Might be time to think about overhauling the HTTP API spec, which um, was a lot of effort, but isn't live. It's, 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 it's static, which is unfortunate. So we should possibly think about taking that and redoing it some way else, especially as I'm not convinced it's up to date um, since recent changes. So, Simone? I would like to add that um, I think getting some documentation to get started. And again, I'm talking about mainly the JavaScript side of things, but we're losing people um, because they can't use it. They can't figure out how to use the stuff. Even looking at the tests, they have a hard time to find what they need. So I, I think there needs to be a sense of urgency here um, and separate that from like how we do it ideally because that's gonna take a lot of time. I would like to see something next week um, to fix this or address this issue. We can always improve on that, but like if the starting point is that bad, that's, that's something we should um, put on a very high priority in the whole process of doing this. So then, so then with that, let's, let's actually shift to look at just process as we have this i have here in the agenda community process around documentation but let's talk about just the overall process around documentation the one thing i would throw in at the at the top of that conversation is um creating documentation is one of those things where some of the documentation has to be written by people who are deeply knowledgeable but also a lot of the like the the grunt work of documentation is a great thing for newbies to do. So 
figuring something out and writing down here are the things I had to do in order to make it work. And then uh, especially if, for example, you do that in more of a partnered way, right? So whenever, whenever someone appears asking questions on any of these repos or on, on IRC to respond saying, hey, we want to make better documentation. Are you interested in helping? And and if they if they take that on to follow up with them and help them create that documentation, Lars, um, I've brought this up a couple of times already. There's a kind of a social contract around community built documentation called W WTFM, write the fucking manual, and uh, it's it's basically what you're describing. Whenever somebody uh, comes on and asks a question, uh, a question, and somebody steps up willing to help out, then you and a kind of a agreement that one of one of the two provides knowledge while the other documents it um, and writes it up somewhere. And, uh, I remember things I read about WTFM a while ago, and uh, like two months ago. And I remember that I had, I, I have to read it again. I remember that I had sort of, it was like it's it's exactly the right idea, but I thought it and maybe it was that it underestimates. I think in addition to that approach, you also need a commitment from the maintainers that sometimes you do have to actually write documentation and on top of asking asking like outside like newbies and people to write documentation. Oh, yeah. but I have to reread it to remember what my other feedback was. One. Very important part here is if you want newbies and fresh contributors to write documentation for you is you have to make it very, very, very easy to contribute documentation. For example, today, if I want to write documentation for JSIPFS, I don't know where to put that. <laughs> where does it go? <laughs> right? And that's not okay, right? Like if I want a social contract saying to people like, please, I'm explaining something to you, please document that. that. That it needs to be very clear, very simple to write the documentation, put it somewhere, get it reviewed from someone who is knowledgeable, and then merge it. And ideally, the merge will be a deployment to a website without any more uh, changes because that's like, if you don't make it easy, there are so many barriers that it doesn't happen. So, I, oh, uh, Richard. In that case, it might be good to overhaul IPFS slash examples because right now it's kind of confusing whether it goes to the website or not and how we do that and how we pin it. Um, Lars, maybe you and I should sit down and just figure out if we can make a really simple, easy guide in the readmes and make it very clear to everyone going there. It's like this works this way. Um, that's just one thing. Um, I had something else. Oh, Matt, it might be good to, for WTFM, you say it needs a like, commitment from the maintainers as well maybe we should rewrite WTFM and come up with a, a better doc that really shows that commitment, that shows maintainer has to be part of it. Looks like Lars has a technical point. So we've been going on for like 35 minutes, I think, and we have at most 15 more minutes. Do we have any goal in this talk that we still need to reach or? That's a good question. I, it looks like Juan has his hand still up, even with the technical point, so Juan. Um, yeah, so the goal would be to, one goal I have is to go through that list of all, all these different endeavors, just to refresh people's minds and, and get them thinking about uh, things that might be really important to, to improve on. <laughs> Non-technical non point, point. All right, I, I would, in, in response to the technical point, uh, yes, I'm, I've been watching the time. Based on conversations before this call, I know that pretty much everyone feels pretty strongly that documentation should be a big priority and developer experience should be a big priority for the for Q4. That's why I let it have more breathing room on this call. Uh, and th having this record that we are all clearly caring about it and thinking about it, I think is really valuable to, to be putting out there. Um, so. So yes, but you're right. We should we do have other things to discuss. So I'll let one comment, and we'll try to wrap this up. Uh, it was a minor comment. Uh, just let's probably use the word overhaul when we really mean dramatically change and like 
rethink from scratch because I think you may mean improvements and um, at least in, in my mind, it's it's a very different amount of effort to try and overhaul something completely. Um, just want to be clear on that because it, some things do need overhauling and some other things don't. Thank you. Cool. All right. So then the other the other things we have on this list, which we can maybe drop some uh, uh, community process in general. I want I have a couple things I wanted to say to that. IPFS blog and IPFS pages might we might be able to push. IPFS cluster and private networks are both very important for us to discuss on on this call. Uh, and then general API alignment between Go and IPFS or Go and JavaScript that is definitely going to be covered in the other in the project specific calls. So we might not need, need to cover it here. Um, so about community process in general, I simply wanted to give voice to the fact that we're giving a lot of thought to community process and uh, we're definitely aware of, we wanna have more people participating in these calls. For this, for these calls, we, we tried to put out a call for people to participate in these roadmap calls, but those invitations sort of went out pretty late. Um, the main thing I would want to personally want to communicate to the community of contributors and adopters is that this is a, we're making this shift to being even more consistent about openness and inv inviting people to participate. And in the future, we will be putting out those invitations more clearly and further in advance. And we're still sort of learning. For example, we didn't realize that this call was going to require everyone to join Zoom to even watch the call. Uh, so um, I wanted to acknowledge, like sort of make sure that everyone knows that we're really thinking about this and working on it. And uh, Kupa. Yeah, I just might fix the last point because I just started streaming this call on Beam using <coughs> the type of protocol, which should, like the quality should be acceptable to watch and hear and participate. Also, it's using the FTL protocol, meaning we have like less than a second of delay, which cool. will be better than YouTube. Thank you, Kuba. Uh, so does anyone have anything to say on this topic of community process? I know that the people, protocol labs people are going to be discussing this amongst ourselves in the coming week about how we're how we're engaging and what we can do to improve community process. Is there anything we want to discuss now on this call? Okay. Well, so then there's the flag is planted. The, the, like, watch this space. We'll we'll be doing more around community process. Oh, Friedel. I just realized. Um, is there anywhere an issue to put notes into? It? I think it would be really good to have one single place where everybody who's interested in this discussion can put notes or remarks or ideas, and also where anything that gets discussed from our side um, is put into to it from everybody. That's a good point. Can we can, maybe we can commit that like next on next week's call we'll report back on where that is. Of yeah, but I think also we should open an issue now for everybody to who wants to fill out like maybe they're listening to the stream now or in, in an hour yeah. uh, to the recording and I like realizing like I want to give input to this so I think there should be a place for yeah. input. To this. Can, is someone willing to open that ticket? Would you be willing to open that I ticket? Can, I can open that ticket. Uh, I would suggest putting it into IPFS slash community. Is that yeah. good? Yeah. Sounds good. Make sure you uh, link it to the IPFS slash PM issue for this sprint um, because people are also going to be going from there. Anything else on that, that topic that people wanted to flag? All right, so if, if people want, have ideas or comments or questions on that, add it to the ticket that Friedel's gonna link to from the, the sprint page. Um, can we skip the IPFS blog and IPFS pages stuff on this call? All right, uh, so IPFS cluster is something that um, is important. I have a sense that it's on, on developers' radar. Do, could people speak to that since I think it won't get much discussion in the project-specific calls today? One. Yes, yeah, so I think uh, IPFS cluster is one of the most important things for anyone who wants to do large-scale archiving of data. 
So as soon as you cross the maybe even five gigabyte boundary, uh, maybe even smaller, um, and certainly you want it for replication. So uh, Hadrifest Cluster is a super important tool for a ton of groups. Anyone who wants to seriously use Hadrifest to back up stuff. Um, and uh, so we have some initial design of it going, and we have some uh, a bunch of thoughts and a certain amount of energy. Uh, we did some amount of work in, in, into this uh, last quarter, um, but it was a lot very preliminary, and um, it was mostly getting like the harnessing around uh, the project uh, getting started. Uh, so the design is roughly there, the harness is roughly there. Uh, we actually need to like build the thing, like the the bulk of or like the meat of building IPFS cluster um, still needs to be done. There's a certain amount of design still left around the interface, so like the porcelain to IPFS cluster, um, the plumbing is is figured out uh, to some degree. The implementation of the plumbing is not yet figured out, um, and so it's really is like the the core data structures or the core the way that it will work, which is a really hard part, is figured out, uh, but it needs a, a lot of work. Um, this is something that we could invest into this quarter, uh, but realistically, it is a lot building, building a lot of new things. Um, and you know, so far, a lot of people want to uh, just focus on, on cleaning up things. So um, what we could do is, is do figure out what is really important to, to do this quarter in, in terms of, of cluster, meaning like a, um, whether it is figuring out user interface pieces, right? Like not necessarily like UIs, but um, how users would go and use this thing, like command line tools, um, whether a web UI is needed, um, all these things. Uh, and I think figuring that out now, uh, which is not a ton of work, but it is a significant amount, uh, would help us, uh, you know, really scope out how much work it will be on and how we can um, uh, push it out. Uh, there is a lot of interest in this. Uh, there's also interest in this from other groups. Um, there is a couple people at uh, Consensus, another organization, uh, who want to dedicate a bunch of time into this. And so, like one person is uh, can be dedicated uh, to work on this. It's just a matter of um, us spending up uh, working on that very regularly. Uh, and so that's kind of where it's at, uh, but it is increasing importance um, and it, along, along with private networks, uh, both are critical for, for this to be used uh, in, in organizations. Cool, I'm noticing the time. Is there anything else that people want to say about IPFS cluster? All right, uh, Juan, could you say something about private networks? and where that lies on a roadmap? Yeah, so private networks is the uh, point of being able to uh, set a set of IPFS nodes that only talk to each other, or in some cases, talk to the rest of the network as well, um, but have a clear distinction of content that should only be distributed in that private network. Uh, so this is something analogous to VPNs in the, now, in the straight transport world. Um, but this is about like a, think of it like a VPN for content. Uh, and so you can either be in a completely private network um, and you don't talk to the rest of the world. Uh, this is something that a lot of our bigger, biggest users really want to be able to run their application on top of their own network and not have to worry about the rest of the network. Um, over time, those networks could be like what VPNs are today, which is mostly separated, but not completely airlocked um, so that you can have some amount of content flowing through that is meant to. Um, there is one really easy way to set up the simplest version of private networks, which is just uh, giving you the ability to separate into your own network. Um, that is something uh, relatively easy to do, something we could ship quickly, but it's something that we should um, you know, uh, focus on. So there, the other thing, is non-private networks, sorry, private networks that are not based on a shared key, meaning there's some PKI that we have to think about, um, and there's something that we need to like structure. Um, we need to think a lot more carefully about how that would work, uh, what, how people would use the PKI, how um, authentication would work, how um, the revocation story works, uh, and all this, this kind of stuff. Uh, I think that that's stuff that is definitely in a roadmap. Um, it's just not, doesn't really have a date yet, so it's 
it's stuff that we know we want to do, but it's not stuff that it's is directly in, in like uh, slated. Um, does that sort of make sense? I, I think. Test, test, uh, test. Okay, great. Where do you, uh, one, where do you think people could follow along to track that conversation or, or to express their interest in seeing that get attention and? Yeah, uh, you're right. There's, there isn't a good spot. I think there's one issue somewhere, but there's not, um, there's not, it's not very good. Uh, there's one issue in GoIPFS. And what this really should be is should be a note, an issue in IPFS notes, so we should create some space for it. Um, that issue in Go IPFS that I remember, and I can pull it up uh, and link to it, link to it, uh, has the description of these both approach, these two approaches, like the simple private network that allows you to build your own network, um, and it's not super secure because any one node, um, there's no revocation story. You would have to like change the key for everyone. Um, and then the more advanced version of private networks that allow you to, you know, have a proper revocation story and also have the ability to like be part of both networks simultaneously. That is a much more complicated uh, thing that, you know, it was also described there, but um, I, I would, I don't know how, what we need to do, one question remains to be figured out, which is how much does a simple case buy into this direction? Like how much, um, how many users absolutely require the more complicated version um, and kind of when, right? So a lot of users could get by with a simpler version for now if they know that the more complicated version is coming in a certain amount of, of time. So, oh, Richard. I just want to point out there's an IPFS slash IPFS cluster repo, which I just linked to in the notes, uh, which also might be a good place to keep track of this. And maybe we should just start putting issues there and talking about it there. Uh, a cluster is different from private nodes. Sorry, from private networks. It's to uh, private networks. They said oh, of yeah. Don't listen to me. You're right. right. So, so the, the, the discussion, we will create a note in IPFS notes about private networks, and we will add a link to it in these agenda notes also uh, for people who want to follow along. And if you are interested in that, please chime in on that note. Uh, so. Uh, Lars, you were right. I allowed the documentation discussion go for too long, which means Juan gets two minutes to run through the entire list of projects that are related to IPFS. <laughs> I did say it would be fast. Uh, I will, yeah, this is kind of rough. Um, cool. I'm going to do it by sharing a screen if I can. Let's see.